Greetings of the day. This is Swarup Shah from IHM Kolkata presenting the final part of the chapter ladder. In the previous session, we have noted how the layout of the ladder is important for its effective functioning. We have also noticed how the strategic position of the equipments help in quality control as well as to provide proper output of the department. It has also told us how workflow is affected by the layout and at the same time if a layout is not properly done how it can tamper the guest satisfaction. Apart from that we had also noticed the layout of the larder department along with the other sections of the hotel. In today's session we will be focusing on the essentials of larder control, importance of larder control, devising larder control systems concepts related to yield, yield testing and yield percentage. At the end of today's session, you will be able to analyze the essentials of ladder control, state the importance of ladder control, employ the yield testing process, apply the ladder control systems, appreciate the significance of ladder control in departmental effectiveness. But before we go into the core of the chapter, you will all appreciate the fact that whenever we are trying to run a section or a department, there are some kinds of benchmarks which are to be set for quality output. There are some kind of standard operating procedures which must be present to ensure that there is consistency in the product. When we try to understand all these things from the perspective of the ladder, yes you are right, we are focusing on ladder control. As far as ladder control is concerned, it is a tool to operate the department in an efficient and effective way. It ensures strict control over the foodstuffs received and correct storage. Putting the standard systems in place with a proper yield management. So under the ladder control area, we are going to again focus on how to go for a quality oriented effective and efficient functioning of the section at the same time how to focus on the cost parameters keeping in mind the standard operating procedures and standard yield percentages. Focusing on the essentials of ladder control, checking the quality and quantity of the raw materials delivered to the ladder. In the functions of the ladder, you have already seen that ladder is also responsible for storing of the various meats, fish, shellfish and other related raw materials such as cheese, egg etc. which is required for its function. It is very very important for the larder chef to check the quality and the quantity of the raw materials delivered to the larder because if the quality of the raw material is not good it is going to affect our yield percentage. Ensuring that all foodstuffs are stored at right temperature and that they can be easily checked. The storage of the proper food material in a proper way is important so that FIFO can be followed. It is very important whatever comes in first be utilized first because as far as the yield percentage is concerned one is going to get a proper yield only when the ingredients are fresh enough. Ensuring that the food is protected from contamination and any form of pest attack. Any form of pest attack will again lead to improper yield. Make sure that portion control is rigidly carried out by proper fabrication of fish, poultry and meat. Now we have to understand over here that meat, fish, poultry are not only high risk items but at the same time they also take away a great percentage of the cost. So if by chance due to improper fabrication the chef is providing 10 grams per portion of meat extra then in that situation after service of 100 portions it will be almost a kilo of meat going away. For that there is no cost return and this will highly reflect in the final food cost percentage. So larder chef needs to be very very careful as far as the fabrication part is concerned. Should always produce the standardized portion. If certain amount of raw material has been procured and the standard operating procedure says that a certain number of portion should come out of that, one should stick to that. If that is not happening then the skill set of the chef must be checked and at the same time the gap analysis must be done to ensure that SOP is adhered to. Look into the fact that the inventory is up to the optimum level and stock of food are turned over. Focusing on FIFO again, we have to ensure that the par stock is 
maintained properly and at the same time we also have to ensure our reordering levels are up to the optimal stock. Taking the daily stock of the food materials stored in the larder section, while going for the daily ordering it is very very important that a daily stock sheet be maintained which can be referred to before fresh orders can be placed. Making every effort to maintain the highest possible standards of hygiene. We have already seen that larder is responsible for working with the coal products. It is responsible for working with the high risk food items. It should adhere to the FSS AI standards to ensure there is no question of cross contamination, neither there is any fear of food poisoning. Now, in order to ensure that there is a proper cost control which can be done as far as the larder is concerned, one should clearly understand the key points of stock maintenance. The daily stock sheet, order sheet and related documents should be easy to maintain and understand. We need to realize the fact over here that daily stock sheet, order sheet, meat tags, these are all documents which are related to the procurement of the raw materials. The procurement of the raw materials must be done to an optimum level to ensure that there is no extra food cost borne, neither there is unnecessary inventory being piled up. Unnecessary inventory not only takes up the storage space, it also adds to the cost of a particular operating period. To, in order to ensure that these documents are properly maintained, simplicity has to be taken care of. It has to be appreciated that there is quite a bit of work pressure as far as the cold kitchen is concerned because they are catering to a number of sections which has been referred to earlier. So, if there is a high work pressure and the procedures are complicated, there is every possibility that the stock maintenance and the maintenance of the registers will not be done in an appropriate way. The stock of food sent in and returned can be maintained with the help of interdepartmental transfer slip. Now, this is very very important in order to ensure that there is a proper record of what is going out of the larder and what has been returned to the larder, the chef can maintain an intra-departmental transfer slip. A summary of those slips can be made at the end of the day to see what has actually gone out of the larder and what has been returned in. Now, the material which has been returned in should be reused so that the cost which has been incurred to procure that particular material can have a reflection in the profit earnings. The meat and the fish preparation areas must maintain proper register for the issue of raw material. Again focusing on the fact that the meat and the fish take up a huge percentage of the cost away, there must be proper registers maintained showing that which quantity of meat has gone to which section of the kitchen. It must also be maintained that what kind of cut has been given to that particular section, what kind of processing and what kind of fabrication has been undertaken as far as that particular meat product is concerned. Because this again has a direct reflection on the yield percentage. There must be a proper file maintaining the function prospectus showing the banquet menu items picked up for banquets. Now, banquets goes for bulk pickup of the larder items. The function prospectus along with the packs must be maintained so that at the end of the day the larder chef has got a clear idea regarding the synergy between the items ordered for and the items which has gone out of the larder for the day. Coming to the importance of the larder section, the larder control process is a very very significant process because it deals with high risk food items. It puts required rain on the cost and its effective regulation. When we are maintaining registers, when we try to find out the synergy between what has been ordered for and what has been utilized and what is the leftover, automatically the cost control comes into process. It increases the efficiency of larder functioning. When we go for calculation of yield percentage, it gives us the loss to the trim. And if it is found that the trim percentage is higher than what is standard, some corrective action can immediately be taken and this will increase the efficiency of the larder functioning. 
pilferage any kind of pilferage can be easily spotted when the records are put together and they are matched with the records of the issue and the store proper maintenance of stocks and records proper ladder maintenance ensures that there are proper utilization of the stocks and the records are all in place so that any queries which are raised regarding the procurement of the raw material the utilization of the raw material that can be proved black and white we have been talking long about the essentials of ladder control we have talked about the importance of ladder control a question now triggers at the back of the mind how to get this entire control process into action in order to understand that we have to understand the basics of the ladder control methods you will appreciate the fact that any control method consists of few basic steps let us focus on those steps one by one whenever we are initiating any kind of control method we have to first formulate the standard operating procedures the standard operating procedure sets the benchmark it sets the boundaries it sets the parameters within which the functioning each and every task should be carried on there must be a procedure in place which measures the actual performance from time to time checking of the records observation of the work helps the ladder chef to understand what is the level of actual performance and whether there is any kind of deviation from the benchmark and or the standards which has been set it is very important that from time to time there is checking of the ladder procedures and a gap analysis is done what is this gap analysis this gap analysis is basically the comparison between the actual standard set and the performance which is happening in the real place gap analysis observed must be recorded and analyzed for corrective actions to be finally taken this ensures that whatever is the standard procedure been set whatever are the parameters that are strictly adhered to any deviation from the parameters will reflect on the yield percentage and that will again have its reflection on the final cost sheet and that will adversely affect the food cost percentage the heart of the ladder control lies in its in the factor of yield what is this yield all about it is the net usable amount obtained after every operations starting from fabricating at raw stages in different level to the finished product as per the guidelines of the recipe in simple words we can say yield is the net usable amount when we are talking about net usable amount we again focus on two factors the first one is the pre cooking yield that is the net usable amount which we obtain before the cooking method has been undertaken when we are talking about pre cooking yield we focus on the fabrication methods we focus on the amount of raw material which we can utilize for cooking after the necessary processing has been done and then we come to post cooking yield the post cooking yield refers to the net weight of the amount of the raw material obtained after the cooking has been done having focused on the pre and the post cooking yield let us now find out what are the various factors which affect this yield under this we are going to find out that there are several internal and external factors which affect the yield process the quality of the raw material the more fresh is the raw material higher is the yield it is a common sense matter to understand that more fresh is the raw material more will be the quantity which can be utilized from that particular material that is wastage would be less the utility of the product to understand this point let us take an example of chicken to what use are we putting the chicken are we using that for a boneless kebab in that the ill will be lesser because the entire bones would be removed are we using the chicken for a with bone curry in that situation the ill will be little higher because we are retaining the bones in the final product we can also understand this particular point with the help of a potato are we using mashed potato 
in mashed potato the main loss is the pre cooking loss that is while we are peeling the potato after that when you are boiling it and then we are mashing it almost we are using the entire potato so in that situation the yield is much higher if you are using turned potatoes as an accompaniment to the roasts in that situation the yield will be much lesser because the potato has to be trimmed more the skill level of the person handling the raw material when it comes to fabrication of meat an expert hand will definitely take out more portion from a given quantity of the meat compared to a new hand the larder chef needs to take care of the fact that the processing loss is minimized and for that it may be necessary that a particular person be trained properly before being allowed to handle the raw materials single handedly while we are peeling the potatoes we should be careful that we are peeling off the skin and we are not taking much of the flesh away while we are going for the peeling of the onion again we need to take care that we are taking the skin out and not peeling off an entire layer of the onion when we do such things we are actually put pushing down our yield percentage the natural make of the product some of the products are such that a majority of it is bound to get wasted say for example a rambutan a rambutan has got a thick skin once we remove the skin away the internal flesh part is very very less we also coat that rambutan and take the seed out so in such situations the natural make of the product is such that it, it will have a comparatively lesser yield the cooking method adapted now when we are applying different kinds of cooking methods the yield percentage varies say for example boiling when we are boiling the leaching is more when the leaching is more definitely there is yield loss when we are steaming comparatively the loss is lesser over here we should also focus on the temperature aspect the higher the temperature more will be the moisture loss and hence the yield will go down further the cooking period how long we are cooking greater exposure to heat pushes down the yield lesser so we find there is a gamut of factors which are affecting the yield we should take care of the fact that we should maintain the highest possible yield at the same time do not compromise with the quality of the product before we further go into the calculation of the yield percentage let us first understand the terms commonly used in larder control as purchase quantity or apq the weight volume or count of the product as it is received from the vendor so as purchase quantity over here denotes the actual weight of the raw material which has been procured by the hotel or procured from the vendor edible portion quantity or epq it is the weight volume or count of the product after it has been cleaned peeled or prepared or fabricated and is ready for use so when we are talking about the cleaning peeling and the fabrication we are actually referring to the pre cooking yield now after the pre cooking yield we undergo the cooking process and after that we have the post cooking yield and that is what the edible portion quantity is now edible portion quantity when we are talking about say for example we are talking about apples apples can be ate directly in the form of certain salads or as a fruit as a whole without any kind of further cooking process that means the pre cooking yield will be its final edible portion quantity but if we are going for raw meat for example after the pre cooking yield has been taken that is after the butcher's yield has been taken then it has to undergo a further cooking process which will ultimately give us the post cooking yield for the meat the post cooking yield is the edible portion quantity when we differentiate between the two what we actually had and what we can actually serve on the platter of the guest what we get is the trim now when we say trim trim is not entirely useless 
we have to understand over here the bones or the meat trimmings which are coming out they are not actually wastage they are utilized further for the preparation of the stock for preparation of various kind of sauces etc yes some of the trims for example peel of the potato that might not find any further use that can be considered as something which is going into the garbage bin but before finalizing on the trim and finalizing on the yield percentage we have to ensure that if the trim is of any use that must also be considered while calculation of the yield percentage.